Hello guys, welcome back to Ink to Aviation. Today's video is going to be all about the communication which exists between pilots and ATC. This video has been requested by Mansoor Ilahi, who is my partner in crime and best friend since grade 7. So Mansoor, let's get started. Guys, before we understand what ATC communication is all about, let's understand the word communication. Communication is defined as the act of conveying meanings from one entity or group to another through the use of mutual understood signs, symbols and semiotic rules. Guys, in simple terms, communication is exchange of information in any form. So guys, so moving on, normally when we talk about communication, Generally in aviation, they always say only the pilot is talking to ATC guys, but there are five basic C's of communication once you're inside the cockpit. So let's see what these five C's of communication in cockpit are. One is the cockpit crew. Guys, the communication between cockpit crew, the two crew or more than two, depending on the airplane model or depending on the flight which is being operated. So there should be effective communication between the cockpit crew. Then the controller or ATC, which we commonly know, the only thing which we know about communication in aviation is the controller, that is the captain and the first officer talking to the ATC. Cabin crew, guys, there should be effective communication between the cockpit and the cabin crew. They need to be advised if it's going to be a short taxi or a long taxi or if they can expect some turbulence or how long the service can be, such things. And the fourth one, the company, guys, every flight is monitored in terms of performance and other parameters. So there's always a communication from the time the flight takes off till the flight lands with the company on a different frequency. Last but not the least is the customer. Guys, your passengers should be informed about what's happening. Why are we getting delayed or what exactly is the reason why we're waiting on ground for so long. So guys, these are the five C's which play a vital role in communication as ATC. Guys, see the five levels of ATC. They could be less or they could be more. I'm going to explain to you how it is. So let's look at the levels, each one of them. First one is the delivery, ground, tower, departure slash approach control depending on the phase of flight and area control. So these are the basic five levels of ATC. So let's take an example to understand these levels better. So today's example is going to be 67201 Indigo Operated Flight. It's an ATR which operates between Hyderabad and Vijayawada. It's a scheduled service, 7 days a week, every day morning 6.20 departure from RGIA to Vijayawada. So guys, once the flight is ready for the departure, the captain or the first officer, whoever is handling the communications, will contact Shamshabad Delivery on 121.85 asking for clearance for the flight. And once the clearance is obtained from Shamshabad Delivery, Shamshabad Delivery is going to pass him on to Shamshabad Ground. Then the pilot or the first officer again, let's say the first officer is handling the communications for this example. So the first officer is going to contact Ground requesting for push and start. The Shamshabad Ground is going to clear him for push and start. And they are going to give him taxi instructions all the way till holding point of runway 27 or 09. Once reaching the holding point of the runway being used, Shamshabad ground is going to pass him on to Shamshabad tower or going to request I fly 7201, contact Shamshabad tower on 118.45. Then the first officer calls up Shamshabad tower on 118.45, takes clearance for takeoff. And once takeoff clearance is obtained and he takes off, the departure control comes into picture. Sometimes the departure control automatically calls the aircraft flying that is 6C7201 or I5701 after passing 1000 feet or 5000 feet depending on the rules and regulations of that particular aerodrome will contact departure control. Now departure control's duty is to safely take this aircraft away from the airport and set it en route towards the destination which is today Vijayawara and later the departure control passes him on to the area control. Chennai control is what handles this flight. So Chennai control will come into picture and the 6C7201 is going to be in constantly in touch with Chennai control on 118.9 till he reaches Vijayawada. Upon reaching closer to Vijayawada, guys, it becomes a reverse order. He needs to contact the area control, the approach control, tower, ground and delivery till he lands or till he lands in Vijayawada. 
So, but guys, if you see this figure, there's only one frequency which is mentioned in Vijayawada when he's landing. That's because, guys, Shamshabad Airport, as of 2018, handled 1,74,000 flights. That is approximately 483 flights a day. However, Vijayawada Airport handles around 30 to 40 flights a day. So, guys, in such smaller aerodromes or such smaller airports, there are no five segments of ATC. There's only one person controlling all the five levels of ATC. Guys, it could be this, or if you go to bigger airports like Dubai or US, any airport in US, uh, for example, Los Angeles, there you might have even further segregations. There might be a ground A, ground B, there might be North Tower, there might be South Tower. So, guys, the basic five remain the same. But depending on the aerodrome infrastructure, air traffic, air regulations, it can be further subdivided. Mansoor, I hope this answers your question. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share this channel as much as possible with all those who are interested in aviation. Thank you. Until next time. Good day.